You say, this is my life. I do what I like. I make my own decisions. But the problem with this is it's an individualized vision, self-centered and self-serving and leaves no room to get to know the people that we were meant to know. And from what the spirit that was sent to me says, together we are meant to grow. And I mention this yo because arrogance like this causing division is so ridiculous. See, our God is alive with a desire for unity and he says to you and me that we were meant to go to the ends of the earth from the top of the steeple to the bottom of the cross. To reach all his people, we bow down before him and ask for his guidance for it's through God alone that our reaches are widened, that his kingdom grows and souls find salvation for God is the creator and we are the creation created to reach those in need, those who have longed for a savior in this life, to right all their wrongs, to clear all their debts and forgive their decisions that led them astray and blurred out his vision of life everlasting. But who are we kidding? He said it is finished. You can be forgiven. Salvation's from God and God has no limits. His grace everlasting and has been extended to cover the sinners and all who've committed to Jesus as savior and giving our life simply goes along with it. Our lives are all sitting on grace, this decisions outside our control and on him, it's all centered. There's no need for fear, no need to be timid. Our spirit is full for his love resides in it. Once confessed and repentant, any debt that was owed has been fully replenished. But the standard belief is that life is our own and that God's been diminished. And this thought has been driven by commander in chiefs, by the house and the senate. But since every soul either goes to hell or to heaven with God, we stand in the street saying he's the God of the universe, the creator, a man, the author of salvation, the only hope in this world. And that's the truth everlasting, whether or not you would like to admit it. So let it be known he is all that we need. We're insufficient alone to pay the price he decreed. You can beg, you can plead, God help my unbelief. But at the end of it all, thank God that it's Christ who intercedes. He stands in our place taking all of the blame. He's the breath of God's grace in the depth of our shame. Our God is alive. He's on fire for unity and he says to you and me, go. In love we were formed, in love we remain. Jesus Christ our Lord, what a beautiful name. And because of him, the veil that separates was torn and the righteousness of Christ alone, we are clothed and placed before God our Father, which was done because of the grace of our Lord. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Death has a place no more. So we go and make therefore disciples and baptize and teach them God's commandments, spread his word across the planet, live according to his standards and be ready to give an answer for the defense of our faith. And behold, the light of the world, Jesus Christ, this indispensable grace has promised to be with us always to the end of the age.